Welcome to the Half Done Hobbyist. It's been a long while since I've done one of these, but Lord Croak is such an interesting character and such a fantastic model that I just had to. So sit back and relax while I build him at super speed and tell you a little bit about the zombie space frog himself. It's said that he was the first slan mage priest and was tutored by the old ones directly. He was taught magic by Tepok, an old one, and taught to manipulate time by Potek. In turn, he and his people taught the first elves how to wield magic, in kind of a train-the-trainer situation. During the Great Catastrophe, which is what the Lizardmen call the first mass chaos invasion to the Old World, chaos forces poured from a rift in space and time and battered the world, destroying all they touched. The forces of good were assailed on all sides. Lord Croak made his last stand in the great city of Itza, the Lizardmen's primary city and the linchpin of their entire defence. Croak was maintaining an energy dome over the city, zapping any demons that came close. Even Croak had limits though, and eventually the constant stream of chaos drained him. With a final effort, he shattered his dome outwards, and the bow wave killed hundreds of thousands of demons in an instant. Thousands still remained, however, and raged into Itza to finish it off once and for all. Croak's elite temple guard held the demons off for many days and nights, protecting the Great Pyramid, with Croak providing support from on high. He rained fire on the attackers while preparing his final incantations. Eventually, the last of his temple guard were defeated and the demons had a free run at Croak. He used every spell in his book, nearly sundering the fabric of the universe with the amount of power he unleashed. In short, Croak was incredible, not far from being a god. Even he couldn't hold back the tide. Twelve bloodthirsters reached him after fighting their way up the pyramid, and tore him to pieces in an instant. Big mistake. The Croak version of Adrenaline kicked in, and his spirit, fully charged with arcane energy, kept kicking demon bottoms even though his body was already dead. This is what Obi-Wan Kenobi promised but never delivered. They struck him down and he became more powerful than they could possibly imagine. His spirit rose above Itza, and his divine light scoured the city of demons. Every last invader was killed. Although Itza was saved, it was savaged badly. The war still raged across the entire world, with the dwarves taking a kicking and the elves being decimated. While under attack, the elves, trained by Croak, managed to complete the Great Ritual, which created a massive vortex which drained most of the magic in the world and deprived the demons of energy. They faded away, screaming, back to their own realm. The world was forever changed, however, into a dangerous place full of magic and monsters. Up until the end of the old world, Croak was used as a relic priest. His spirit lingered near his body, and when the lizard men needed his help, they brought his body from his crypt and he could fight on in spirit form, using his withered dead body as an anchor to the real world. He couldn't communicate in the traditional sense any longer, but he could still do some serious damage to his enemies. Even though he only had a mere sliver of his former power, that was still enough to defeat his and the lizard men's enemies. It was thought that Croak would have died, properly this time, during the end times. However, the Seraphon of the mortal realms have witnessed Croak appearing suddenly during great times of need, doing the job then disappearing again. It's said that Croak has ascended to the right hand of the Old Ones and will not rest until Chaos has been completely and utterly defeated. He's still a bit sore about them blowing up the world that was. If you think about it, Croak was one of the easier characters to transfer to AOS. He's basically a space ghost, so he could hang about for eons and then just appear in the mortal realms. So that's Croak's story. He appears in the Kragnos book and he's defending another city, but I'll let you read about that yourself. Let's talk about the model for a little bit, and it's incredible. It looks like it would be a really complicated build because of the rings around his palanquin, but it's not. It's probably the easiest large-scale model I have ever built. Everything fitted together perfectly. You could actually click bits together and then glue them afterwards because it just fitted so well. The two hardest parts, believe it or not, were gluing his froggy arms on because it was hard to arrange them properly and to glue the legs on his little skink helper. But apart from that, it was a total joy. So let's go on to his rules. He has some really unique ones, which I think represent him so well. It can be really difficult to kill him because at the end of each turn you count up all the wounds and mortal wounds on him and you roll 3d6. If it all adds up to 20 or more, then he's dead. If it doesn't, he gets all his wounds back, so you have to kill him in one turn. This means you could get as few as 2 wounds on him and kill him with 3 sixes, or 16 wounds, you'd roll 3 ones and he would be fine. If he receives 18 or more wounds in one turn, 
he will be killed outright though. He can increase the range on his spells by using a Skink Wizard or Oracle as a signal booster. You measure range from any wizard up to 12 inches away from Croak, rather than Croak himself. You could probably shoot spells round corners as well. In a smaller version of the barrier that first cleansed Itza, he has an Azerite Force Barrier. You count up the number of attackers and use that as the attack's characteristic of the weapon. So if you're being attacked by 10 guys, the weapon has 10 attacks which is very cool. Impeccable Foresight means that you roll 3 dice at the start of the hero phase, and every 4 plus gives you 1 command point. Croak can cast 4 spells in the hero phase, and his unique ones are Celestial Deliverance and Comet's Call. Celestial Deliverance can be cast 3 times per hero phase, and becomes easier to cast each time. You can target up to 3 enemy units, and on a 2 plus they suffer d3 mortal wounds. For Comet's Call, you pick D3 units, and each suffers D3 mortal wounds. If the casting roll is 10 or more, you pick D6 units instead. These rules do a great job of conjuring up the image of Croak sitting behind his crackling energy barrier and raining down destruction on a large part of the enemy army, which is basically what he did all his life. He also has the command ability, Supreme Gift from the Heavens, which lets D3 friendly units fly. They also get a plus one save from missile weapons. So this would be really good for relocating units. I love this one. I don't know enough about all AOS units to know if this is commonplace, but it seems like such a, a good tactical move to me. Well, that's it for my visit to the coolest dead frog to ever exist. I'm going to try to paint this guy up. I'm going to try to film it if I've got time. So hopefully that will make a video in the future. If you want me to continue making this style of video, please let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.